Never Stop Learning, week 170. I'm going to show you my first look at the flame filter available in Adobe Photoshop CC 2014. All right, so here I have this uh, really simple candle illustration. It's set up as a smart object, uh, and I want to add a flame to it. So in order to use this filter, the first thing I want to do is create a new layer. So over here in the Layers panel, right at the bottom, I'm going to click on this button right here, and that's going to allow me to add a new pixel base layer. All right, next, what I need is a path for my flame to follow along. So I'm going to hit the P key on my keyboard, and that's going to give me the pen tool. So I'm going to click and just uh, pull out these beziers real quick, and then click again right here, and I can make whatever changes I need, and then release. Now, if you want to bend these guys around, just hold down the Option key, and then drag on these little handles, and you'll be able to set this up however you want. All right, now that I got this ready to go, I'm going to come over here to the Filter menu, scroll down until I find Render, and then choose flame. All right, so right away, I'm gonna be hit with this uh, panel that has all these different parameters I could enter. The first thing I wanna do is click on this little drop down menu and choose default. All right, so there we go, we have the default settings now. And at the moment, if you take a look over here at the flame type, it's showing us that we have multiple flames, one direction. All right, so I'll choose one flame along a path, and that looks pretty cool. But because I am dealing with a candle, I'm going to choose this guy right here at the bottom, candlelight. All right, so when I click on it, it's starting to look like a candlelight already. Now, some of these guys are grayed out, and that just means I can't use them with this particular flame type. All right, so whichever ones are highlighted, we can make some changes there. So right here we have the width. I could come in here and then enter in a specific value. When I hit tab, you see it's updated right over here in this preview. Now, you don't see anything previewed in the background, so don't worry about this thing covering up most of your space. And unfortunately, you can't zoom in or out just yet. Maybe in future versions, we'll be able to do that. All right, so next, I'm going to come over here and show you. You could actually click and drag on these sliders, and that's going to make some changes for you. Or when you're hovering over this slider, you could use your scroll wheel, and that'll go ahead and make the changes for you. All right, so I'm going to back off on the width a little bit. All right, something like that looks fine. We're going to skip all of these guys that are grayed out. And next, we'll come over here to Turbulent. All right, so I'll back off on this a little bit. Now you see it's kind of straightened out a little bit. And as I drag this over towards the right, you see it's starting to make some different changes here. So the way I start figuring out how everything works is I just grab one of these sliders and drag it all the way to the right. Now I see, all right, this is really turbulent. When I click and drag and bring it all the way to the left, now it's not turbulent at all. So it kind of gives me an idea of what this slider means. All right, so I'll leave it right about there. Jag. So as I bring this towards the right, you see it's going to start getting more jagged. I don't know, maybe it's an electrical fire? I'm not sure. All right, so I bring it all the way to the right, and I see I get this effect here. And that's not really what I'm looking for. Since it is a candle, I'm going to back off on this guy pretty much, I guess, all the way. All right, now the opacity. If I back off on this a lot, you see we have a real faint flame here. Now, if you want to turn up the heat, just bring this guy all the way to the right. And now you see we have this nice hot white flame. Every time I'm making a change, you see that the shape of my flame is changing. And that's true for all of these sliders. The reason is, over here where it says randomize shapes, I have this little checkbox turned on. Now if I get rid of that, and then I decide I want to make some changes, I have the exact same flame. So this is going to help you out like if uh, you want to make sure that all your flames look identical. But because it is such a random thing, this thing is always set to randomize shapes by default. All right, so the opacity looks pretty good to me. Uh, right around that looks good. Next, we have flame style. I have it set to normal at the moment, but we could also get more violent with it. And we also have a flat version. Uh, I'll leave mine set to normal. And at the moment, this is grayed out, but you'll see later on you can make some more changes there. Uh, over here, use custom color for flames. All right, so let's turn this guy on. And now that gives us access to still color chip. So if I click on this, we could even go ahead and make a blue flame if we want. All right, so I'm going to actually uncheck this box because I want to leave it set to the default settings. All right, uh, this looks pretty good actually, but uh, what I want to do is get a little bit more turbulent with it and maybe back off on the width a little bit. Uh, maybe There we go, that looks good. All right, I'll click OK. Now, I have this little path thing in the way, so I'm going to come back to the paths panel, click on the panel, and that gets rid of the paths for me. There might be another way to do it, but that's just the way I'm used to doing it. All right, now what we're left with is a pixel-based uh, effect here. So with the Move tool, I'm going to hit the V key to grab it. And then I'll just click and drag, and I'm able to reposition my flame wherever I want. So I could bring it in here, 
If I wanted to maybe uh, thin this guy out a little bit, I could do that. And you might want to change the blend mode. Screen seems to work pretty good for me because you can see through it and it looks pretty good there. All right, so that's how you would set up like a candle flame. All right, next, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm actually going to black this thing out just so we can start from scratch. Now, you might run into a situation where you want to create uh, some text that has that flame filter applied to it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to hit the T key on my keyboard to activate my type tool. And I'll click once right here on the document. And with my cap locks turned on, I'm going to type in flame, command enter to accept, and then cap locks off. All right, command T so I could transform. And I'm going to click and drag right here, introduce the shift key. That's going to keep everything proportional for me. And if I introduce the option key, it's going to be coming out from the center. All right, I'm going to release my mouse first and then the uh, modifier keys. And uh, we're all set. So I'm going to accept that change by hitting return on my keyboard. Now what we need are some paths for our flames to follow along. So in order to do that, I'm going to come over here to the layers panel, right click on that layer that says flames. And I'm going to scroll through until I find create work path. When I click on that, now I got all my paths set up. So right away I thought, oh, I could come over here to the filter menu and then add this render flame effect. All right, but right away Adobe Photoshop says, nope, you can't because we actually need a pixel base layer. So I'll click OK. Now we can rasterize this layer, but I might need that uh, text later. Maybe I need to make changes or something. So I'm going to create a blank layer for me to create this flame on. I'm going to hide my little text layer. And now I'm left with these pads. All right, so let's come back over here to filter, uh, render, and flame. All right, now we're hit with another warning. This one is a little bit different. This one's letting us know that the path is longer than 3,000 pixels. So we're only going to get a preview of the first 3,000 pixels. But that's okay. I'll show you what happens. I'll click OK. Now we have this guy set up here. I always come back to the top and change it to default. All right, now I got this. I could barely read any of this text. I can't really even see that it's a word just yet. So what I want to do is back off on the width a little bit. All right, so I'll bring this in some. All right, now I have some intervals going over here. I probably want less interval action. There we go. And you could just continue to play with this until you get the exact look you're going for. I'm going to bring the length up a little bit. And let's see, I could play around with the turbulence and just make whatever changes I need on here. All right, great. So now that I have this guy set up how I want, uh, let's see, you see this little gap right here? that is because it's going beyond those 3,000 pixels we were talking about before. So it's no big deal. I could just see the first part of it anyway. It gives me a good idea of what my flame's going to look like. Uh, but this time for the quality, I might want to back off on this a little bit. I'm going to change it to low, so that way it could render it out a little bit faster for me. All right, so I'll click OK to accept that. I get my little progress bar going. It would be moving a lot slower if I left it how it was, but we are able to get this result pretty quick. All right, again, I see these paths here, so I want to come to the path menu and just click off of it. There you go. Now I got my new flame text. I could probably make it a little bit more legible, but I just wanted to give you an idea how to do that. All right, now there's another way to work with this. Since we are working with paths, right away I'm thinking, like, why don't we use Adobe Illustrator? So I'm going to head on over to Adobe Illustrator. I got this circle set up here, and I'm going to use my Pathscribe tool. This is actually a plugin by Astute Graphics but it allows me to make some really cool changes to my vectors really quick. All right, so I've already created a pretty cool logo here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that to my clipboard, switch on over to Photoshop, and over here in my paths panel, I wanna create a new path. So I'll just go ahead and paste this in as a path, click OK. Back over here in the layers, I actually do not wanna add that flame to this existing layer, so I'm gonna add a new layer here. And if I need to reposition this, I'm going to hit the A key so I could have my path selection tool. And now I'm just going to click and drag to bring this guy down a little bit. All right, cool. Now we have our pixel base layer. We have our path for our flame. So let's come over here to the filter menu, scroll down to render, and then choose flame. All right, once this panel pops up, I'm going to come back over here. And you guessed it, I'm going to go to default. All right, cool. So let me see. For the length, this time I want to randomize the length a little bit. Uh, the width, we could back off on that so we could see our shape a little bit. That looks cool. All right, and the angle, I'm actually going to bring this up a little bit. And the reason I want to do it is I wanted to make it look like it's kind of being blown over this way. All right, so I'll play around with uh, these sliders a little bit more, get some different effects. 
Uh, maybe more turbulence in there. There we go. It looks cool. Uh, and now, let me see. I actually want to change the color of this. So instead of an orange, I'm going to go with, I don't know, some weird green color or something. All right, now that I've gone ahead and made all these changes to every single one of these sliders, I mean, I really didn't, but let's say I have this look that I really wanted to get done. And maybe I want to use this and on a different uh, project later. I could come over here to where it says preset, scroll down, and I could actually save this preset off. Once I have that saved, all I have to do is come back in here and load that preset. So if you get a really cool flame effect that you like, you could save it off and use it again later. I'm going to click OK to accept that. And it's going to go ahead and process this guy for us. And there you go. Remember, come over here to pads, click right here. And now that's going to allow you to see this. And there you have it, folks. That's my first look at the flame filter in Adobe Photoshop CC 2014.